Hi everybody, welcome to episode 92 of Music Real Talk with Marvin. Um, I actually looked at our numbers and we are on a slight uptick. I think people are invested in your uh, in your drama. No, people, I think people want to uh, hear about the neck up depression. And we've, well, we've, I should. We started uh, a following. Ben says, Ben says, I have eyebrow up depression at this point. <laughs> eyebrow up, just in your brain. <laughs> Just the, the top half of my brain. This is the, I, you know, I, honestly, I, I wanted to wait to the podcast to, to, to tell you, but like I really thought about a solution. It's sort of a deal with the devil kind of thing, but to where you can let this thing not ruin your life. You get your career back with vengeance. Go, go, get, go back to my ex-wife. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you get, you get, you, you're not with your ex-wife. You get fame, you get our back catalog is going to sell like crazy, but the sacrifice might be too big. K- kill my ex-wife? <laughs> no. You're just going to have to cut off your dick. Oh, all, all done already. Dude, just cut it off. It's like, like Abraham, but just take it a few more inches. Uh, you're just saying, because that used to be my joke. The full, the, the, the full, that joke 12 years ago was pretty ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. But I'm saying, no, if you, if you actually take take the whole sucker off, just be dickless. How would that make our career, Bo? We're going to be an NPR tomorrow. You're going to be the best saxophone have, woman player in history. I didn't think about that, because I was about to say, there are a bunch of people that did stuff like that already. But uh, yeah, the not, one not to this at- level, not to this level. I actually think it actually it trumps the black card too. So like you would be of up course, there with Coltrane yeah. and Parker. People are gonna be like better and, than Parker. Well, look at me. I already got kind of a ten. So yeah, it's, it's perfect time. You also you you look good as fuck. What happened to you? I'm just walking around like my baby has like a shade thing on her stroller, and I'm just in the sun, just you know, <laughs> I was walking around. It's because you're too far south. You should come an hour and a half north to Milwaukee. Yeah. Get a get out get our tanning sun, not the burning sun. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I want to to think about. It. I, I had something to say when you started with uh, my drama thing, but now I don't remember. Um, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I feel I feel as you know. I feel much better. Yeah, things are, uh, so, things are on, on the up and up. It's like, not the things on the up and up. It's not like something happened when my, my things are on the up and up. That's not how it goes. I just feel better. <laughs> that's good. Well, that's I generally, I generally um, speaking, I feel better. But it's uh, you know, you get you get moments. You you hear me complain uh, the most out of anybody at this point. Yep. But uh, I told you, I've been having a lot of conversations this week that the subject didn't even come up. Oh, oh that's good. Which is a big progress for me, and um, you know. Yeah. I heard that I heard your new tune. You're doing like some. Oh wait, trades. wait. The funny the, that was my joke that I talked to somebody that I can't mention, mm-hmm. and we were talking about you know my ex-wife, how what she cares about. All, all she cares about is the book, and I was like, she wishes I would kill the guy she was with, uh-huh. and kill myself because how many books she would sell, and then it's a great. Promotion, promotional tool, but then she would have to raise the kid. <laughs> so, you know, life is full of dilemmas. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's actually that's too much drama for, you know, that make it would make the 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 whole thing. Well, yeah, I mean, I actually think that that would be that's probably that probably has crossed her mind. Dude, writers are like that. You remember we met this writer in Highland Park? We were talking about how his life was too cushy, and mm-hmm. it's like. Uh, my ex met a writer, in, writer here that, not necessarily a good writer, but her story was that her dad killed the mom, mm-hmm. okay? And the kids knew that he did it, but it took um, something like seven, eight years until they could prove it in court. So they were with the dad, and the entire time they knew that he killed the mom. This is like the, the actual story? Yeah, that's the actual story. In real life? Yeah. Oh, wow. So the, the older daughter wrote a book about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, yeah, they're a strange breed. There's a lot of, 
what, what I've always noticed, especially in college, we, you'd have people that would get into lyric writing and then like discover Bukowski. And like, there's a whole lot of like people who are just like Bukowski without the talent. And, uh, uh, yeah, this lady didn't get her dad to kill her mom, though. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not saying she, she made that happen, but, but like, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of people like really drawn to the grit of uh, like these highly dysfunctional creatives. Uh, but uh, they, they tend to take more of the dysfunction than the creative. Uh, you, see, you see that a lot in music too. People are more committed to the lifestyle than the actual discipline. You well, know? I, was I was talking to you about it. Um, well, I'm not going to say why I talked to you about it. But the one thing that people don't understand when discussing basically anything uh, about people and all this identity crap that people talk about is that it's not about what happens to you. It's about how... Uh, it's not about what happens to you, it's about your interpretation of what happens to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, and when you look at, like, literature, most stories, like, you know, somebody's born, some stuff happens, then they die. Like, the arc of the stories are frighteningly similar, but, you know. But even if you go a little bit deeper into it, every story is the same in the sense of there is an order, then there is an element that causes chaos, and then right. there is a new order by the end. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that emerges out of the chaos. So that's really, that's uh, what every book should be. And every story, even though I read a lot of books in Israel, that there is an order, there's no chaos, nothing changes. And it's end. boring. And yeah. you could do, you, I, I specifically read a book about this kibbutz, I told you, and I was like, they could end it in every moment, every page at every moment, every <laughs> line could be the last line of this book. Yeah. And it will be the same. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah but generally it, speaking, that's what you want to have. There's a lot of music like that. You know, it's, it's weird, but... Bring it back to music for a second. Uh, How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> there, are, I, it flashes me back to like just people who make pointless works. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, in relation to what we were talking about, like you know, books that like don't have good art. You know, don't have like plots that are. Typical, but like I remember when we first started playing fusion uh, together, like oh, like I don't know, 2007, and uh, before we started writing songs, which is really a period of like what three, four weeks, something like that. Uh, like we we started pretty quick, and we started like introducing that to our set. But like I would say, like for for a couple of months, we played some Schofield tunes, some Pat Pat Metheny tunes, and I just remember like this one. Schofield tune we were playing, which was kind of like a second line thing. Uh, do you remember that one? Do like do like it. Do like it. The melody was like boom, ba da 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 Right, and I just remember like I think that was the tune, like the first the first or second time we played it, where I was like, why don't we write our own music? Because it was like so, I felt like I felt like I could improvise things in any direction <laughs> that would sound exactly like that or better. You know what I mean? And and it's like there's a certain point where it's like you are you are just committing to other people's um, arbitrary ideas and doing it because that's the style you're covering. Yeah, I was I was already writing songs, if you remember. Mm -hmm. But the good thing that you brought to the table was the amount of songs. Because it would take me, I would just be very, like, I knew I want to write songs, so I knew everybody, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, because yeah. I, I knew that every, I would just, you know, it's my conclusion, like, yeah, every person I really like write their own music. So you got to write songs. But song. so it's like, I should write songs, but I didn't commit in the sense that you did, they're like, okay, we're writing songs, let's, let's write a fucking, let's write fucking 50, you yeah. know, and, we, and, and that, and that was really fucking good for, you know, for me too. It was for everybody. Um, yeah. Because we don't all have to be great, but it's like you need to put stuff out there and right. play it and see how it feels. And especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's like you also, when you really put a lot of stuff it kind of makes you face 
a lot of the limits that you have and mm-hmm. kind of push up and look for variations and push your boundaries a little bit. So I think that was really good. And uh, yeah, obviously I like the direction we there, took it. There's something, like, you know, I, I had a student this week. I don't know if he listens to the podcast, but in any case, he was saying, we were talking about like his, he wanted to write for this project. I mean, the conversation was a little bit funny because like he has a project with like a singer and they want to start writing some original music, but the singer's not like a trained musician. So it's like, I mean, I know from like hanging out with like Ben, like you get to this point where like they can't hear a flat 13 on a dominant chord. And it doesn't matter what you do, that note is unavailable on that chord. It's like a broken instrument. Uh, and, and it's like, and at that point, it's like, do you, like, what do you do? Do you start, do you avoid certain yes. musical choices that make total sense in the flow of your writing just because yes. it's not going to happen? Right. You, you probably should. But anyways, so I was talking to him about that and then I was like, and then I realized that he didn't, it's not something that he's preempting the situation, but he didn't write any tunes. I was like, show me what you what you got. Like, let's talk about like what other places instead of that thing. He's like, no, she just can't. Like, you know, we have problems with this. But like, I didn't write the tune. I didn't write any tunes. I was like, do you have ideas? It's like, no, I don't. I don't. Like, I don't. I don't really have a lot of experience writing. And uh, this is the thing. Like, I, I mean, I was trying to explain to him. It's like, I think I, I like, I wrote thousands of songs. I, I did. I put the pen to the paper and wrote melodies thousands of times. You know, hundreds of those things got maybe an underline and even a name or a number mm-hmm. or something like that. And maybe, you know, a, a hundred, I don't know, less than a hundred of them made it on the albums. But, you know, a, a, a respectable amount. Yeah. But But it's but this thing of like not taking yourself seriously enough to actually crystallize ideas to allow things to become to just be lifted out of this totally floating place of just improvising and wiggling your fingers around into like you know some just like this you know it's like I see my baby playing on the carpet and there's all these toys like she will pick one up and look at it for a minute you know what I mean? It's like that's that's like writing without committing. You know, it's like it's sort of like that. It's just like you know, uh, you're say, pushing I'm, it. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying that like uh, that it's like one of our songs. But like when you actually take an idea and write it on a piece of paper and write the chords down, just so you can remember what you did or something. It's like you just give it like that extra bit of attention, and you don't know if it's good or not yet. But it's maybe a piece of one of your song of like you know your upcoming things. But like when I see this like inability to stop for a moment and like it it just tells me something that's really problem. It sh- it shines a light on something super problematic, which is you're not able to discern quality inside your own process. Like if you just stumble across something you really like, you're not able you're not able to pause and realize that you really like this and you would like to do this sequence of sounds again. You know, things that I something that I used to do. So I'm I, I can give a tip, but I would say something about what you said. So I was with everything happening in my life, I was pretty lazy, and still I was thinking after I wrote that one song mm-hmm. that I have maybe enough or almost enough for another Russian doll project already just from fucking around yeah do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like I already wrote a bunch like a bunch of new songs that we didn't like and, and and we also wrote a bunch of new songs that we used on Marvin right but I'm saying it's like even without trying to write anything I end up writing like an album and a half at least mm-hmm. you know what I mean um so yeah that's kind of strange as far as people go, but I think it's like everything, like, you know, it's practice. So you need to practice finishing songs. I mean, I, I, my, my thing that's really shocking about the writing thing, it's like, don't you want to? It's, like, you know, don't you want to be a guy who has songs? 
There is something about, you know, and it's the same thing with people that have ever recorded their albums, especially the first albums. And it's, you know, like, let's say you have a really killer A that you wrote and you really like it. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it's killer, you like it. You know, for a lot of people, they'll get stuck for 10 years right in the B section. Cause like, oh, the A is so good. I really want the bridge to also be great. It's like, but the truth is, it doesn't matter. You just need to write something that's whatever you can do right now and move on and write another song and move on and write another song and move on and write another song. That's it's like, I mean, you know, th- th- there's definitely that. Like, you know, if you, if you are not, if, you, if that's where you get stuck. But I don't think that that's But But, but look, look at somebody, like, look at Ben. Look at Ben. It's like he had so many songs where he was stuck on the lyric, on the lyrics for like, seven years dude your lyrics are like you don't even love have to love me back do, 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 do. right every well, goes every, every first glance is a heart attack is a heart attack every first glance is a you don't have to love me back dude you, you don't need to spend seven years on it right you know what i mean i know what you mean yeah i i think i think uh, every first glance is a raptor attack yeah i i get what you're saying like you sometimes you just need to uh like ride like have something that's just kind of a band-aid no, on the not, song to just not in make... a day but for like a week and then right. do what you can do and best. move the fuck on to the next song absolutely I, I mean, I agree with that, but I don't, my point is that I don't think people get stuck there. I think there's something axiomatic that I take for granted about wanting, it's not even about being a musician, it's, it's more like about being a human being. Like, I feel like a lot of the things that lead me forward, like, you know, in let's say as a guitarist, and always have, is just kind of like this really simple question which is the most powerful one which is what would you like to have what would you like to be right yeah like you're gonna sit down you have time to try to become something what are you trying to do here and i think a lot of people sit down to practice without ever thinking about it like there's no there's no point you know, it's like, and if you don't want to write songs and make albums, and like, to, like to me, you know, even like improvisation might seem like it's the big thing here, but to me, improvisation is something that lives inside the kind of music I want to play. Yeah. Right? It's it's a compartment in it. It's not the point. Improvisation is certainly not the point of jazz. Right, it's ah, uh, you know. I mean, it's it's a it's a very big part of what jazz is, but you know, well, there's I, to, to say there is a point. What's the point of jazz? Well, I don't know. I mean, that that the point of jazz is probably to play jazz. You know, to, to, uh, like to, that's the thing. You want to be a jazz player. You want to be. You want to get better at this thing, right? It's like you want to maybe have more command over the ability to like play these play this kind of music and all the caveats that go into that which you know being able to maybe very freely make melodies and chords is a huge part of like you're not gonna get there without that skill but um it's it's sort of like i feel like you know there are a lot of i see a lot people who are hyper focused about like this very tiny compartment in the music and don't even ask themselves some pretty basic questions about what they are looking to get out of this whole venture, right? Uh, that's what the people don't do with life. And, and I, I have, you know, I have something to say about that too. Mm-hmm. That, and that obviously relates to my story too with my ex-wife. And it, it relates to a lot of people though. And mm-hmm. it relates to a lot of people that I see that people look at what there is and what they're doing. And if I give an example for music, I'd say people, um, and I heard it from some news, I heard it from a lot of people, they look at, let's say, playing standards. And they look at it and they're like, oh my God, I can't just do what everybody's doing the same way everybody's doing it, Mm -hmm. right? So they're trying to do something else. The problem is there is nothing else to do. You can dye your hair pink 
and say that you're there with them. It doesn't fucking matter. You still have to get up. You still have to go to fucking work if you wanna if you wanna eat. You still have to cook. You still have to wipe your ass. You still have the people that you have to deal with. You know, you if if somebody somebody sticks shit in you, you stick shit in them, or you two, put two buckets together. Those are your options. You don't have other options. Do you know right. what I mean? It's sure. like you you either gonna. Yeah, yeah, we all live. We all live in the world. That, that that's that's exactly. The, the world is limiting you. There is no, in and it's true without two. It's like okay, so you're not gonna play, write songs. You're gonna improvise. Okay, people improvise are gonna. If you have perfect pitch, you're gonna improvise stupid songs. And if you don't have perfect pitch, you're gonna improvise stupid cacophony. It's like what are your options? Yeah. It's not like everything is open. The world is your oyster. The world is not your oyster. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? I know and it's true with art. It's, it's true with life. It's true with everything. It's like you cannot. It's like, oh, I'm not going to play with. I have a chess board, but I'm not going to play with, uh, you know, with the rules of chess. Okay, what game are you going to invent? Checkers? <laughs> You're going to start like uh, throwing the pieces at each other? The, the, as, it's like you very limited. Well, by, I think I think that's. Um... A big part like that that approach is a big part of why we had uh, why we succeeded in some things and failed in others because you know in, in, uh, in a very big way we always operated in reality but you know the sort of like we said that there is some sort of real market reality that's being corrupted by the jazz hierarchy right yeah, which says, is true right I, I know. And, and that we're like, that I think people think we kind of invented ourselves, but we didn't, and, you know, like we, in a way we were just trying to be, to circumvent all of the hierarchies and go straight to trying to find the people through the venues, through the small towns. Yeah. That, that's all we did. Um, we didn't try to make a new kind of venue, right? Uh, and also, like we were, we were working within the constraints of w- whatever instrumentation and style we were coming out of. We weren't very avant-garde in that sense. And the thing we ended up doing was pretty strange, uh, but but in any case, that's uh, it, it's still working within within the constraints of um, of of reality at the time, but. People that, ref, you know, that only, that are like the opposite of what Sam Newsom was talking about, like the Wynton Marsalises of the world, who just go full force into the machine and become the leaders of the machine. You know, there's obviously like lots of success to be found there. Like I think last, last time we talked, I talked about Open Studio and those guys in New York that like are now making like jazz content online, Christian McBride and all those guys. And but- but you know, to me, people like Winton Marsalis are kind of the same as Sam Newsom, and I can explain why too. Okay, it's like if I'll give I'll give also later an example from life, um, from that. But somebody like Winton Marsalis also says basically, yeah, it's all been done, it's all the same, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it to preserve it. Well, right, and there is, but and there, that, that's the that's the poetic way of saying it. What they're really doing is yielding institutional power. Yeah, you know? but yes, but I'm saying that's the way he would say see it. Well, I mean, I think that's the way he would say it in an interview. <laughs> but I think I think the way he he saw it was that there is great amount of public funding. And if he positions himself as the custodian of this thing, then he will be, you know, he'll be given the keys to the kingdom. You I think know, Anderson sees it in the same way for avant-garde and John Zorn saw it in the same way for avant-garde. I think with fusion, like there was never any institutional power to be had. It's true, but I don't know. I just don't know if I agree with you on the, in the sense that, you know, it's like we say about politicians, like, oh, the NRA, NRA bought them, for mm-hmm. example, or I don't know if it's on the left, Planned Parenthood bought them. But I think it's like those people were waiting. It's the, the people that want to be bought and believe in this, those things get bought by the people that want to buy them. Do, do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, to me, 
Wyndham Marsalis didn't want to do what or Kenny G or whatever. We didn't want to do what we're doing. Or we want to do what they did. And then we looked at opportunities within what they did and found success in it. I, kind of, I have to say that I really feel like if Weather Report just dressed in suits, there would be just. institutional money, institutional power infusion. Because like, when, like, when you look at Louis Armstrong, like a picture of him, right? Or a picture of like Muddy Waters or any of those dudes, it makes sense for somebody to have a job to preserve that. But like when you just... Like, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's like a zoo animal you want to keep. But, like, when you see, like, you know, Chikoria in a Hawaii t-shirt and a calculator watch, like, holding a keytar, it's just, it doesn't make sense to preserve that image. Like, it's, yeah. it's just like that fucking, it's like that animal, like, that thing, like, in the, an alien, like, that's, like, living in the tube. It's like, kill me. <laughs> kill me. I don't deserve to live, you know? It's like, yeah, it's like, maybe, maybe we should just let that one fucking die out. It's like those guys, like if, even, even if I look at Wayne Shorter, like, you know, Wayne Shorter in Jazz Messengers in the suit or like in Miles Davis, like preserve. But then you see him like with the fucking like 70s, like open V-neck and like bell bottoms. It's like, mm, I don't know about, I don't know about <laughs> that look. Is that, is that good? Is that sexy? Like maybe maybe we need to get rid of that. Like the fashion, they they also what? jazz as other dress up differently. So now I'm saying something that's probably wrong, okay? <laughs> but it's like just from the outside, it feels like maybe jazz function in a specific way, like on date nights. Yeah. And you cannot take somebody to a fusion show for a date night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. It's like you can see Louis Armstrong and everybody like, oh yeah. You know, like everybody mm -hmm. like bopping along. It's like even if you're not that into jazz and even the messengers and all those people, it's kinda like low key enough. And then yeah. it's like if you look at us. But I don't know. I mean I feel like if if like uh if like you 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 went down like the tube in Super Mario and it was like, and then like, you know, you went under underwater with like Sonic the Hedgehog and be like, bye bye Blackbird. Yeah. Maybe that shit would be ridiculous too. But like, I hear river people, bo -bo 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 -bo. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, dude, I am in Super Mario. Yeah, that's true. I take it it's back. Like, I, it's I like take that, back what I said. Also, Cold Train is not date fish? night. And no. Ornette Coleman is not date night and all those people. So I take it back what I said. It's like, it's date night if, like, you know, you're dating, like, Yoko Ono is like about <laughs> happy to death or something. I mean, yeah. Um, date night or something, dude. But, yeah, but uh, let me go back to the point about Wynton Marsalis. That mm -hmm. to me is, is kind of, he kind of thinks the same way as, like, there is nothing to discover here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just we're preserving it and we're just a way of doing it the way everybody did it. And people like us, which is... You know, obviously, I think that's the right way to approach it as an artist. We look at it and like, okay, let's let's dig the shit out of it and see what you what we can find in within the constraints that that are already there, just like they did, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, they found we basically work with the same constraints that maybe not Charlie Parker because we have a little bit more like a harmony developed a little bit, but let's say close enough to like let's say Cannonball Adderley, and we're like, okay, let's same constraints basically of this improvising jazz idiom, let's see what the fuck we can get out of well, it. Well, it's not the same constraints because the people fucking listening lost like, you know, probably 80 IQ points on average. I know, but but musically I'm saying, we're looking at it not like, oh, there is nothing to do here. We're like, oh, there is definitely complete like new worlds you can discover. Oh, no, no. Music, and, and, and music, you, and, music is truly infinite. That, that's and, and you can see it with Marvin because it's like, we're so different than anybody else. And Dude, it, I, it, you know, so... And, I, and in, in every level, composing, playing, improvising, sound, sonic. But uh, it's the same thing that I was talking about with mar like, you know, marriages or whatever, that you don't really have an option. Like, you think you have so many options out of it. Like, the only thing that's stopping me is my imagination. No, it's not the only thing that's stopping you. And also your imagination is shit. Because yeah. people that have imagination, because people that have imagination mm -hmm. do what we do. People that have imagination find... Uh, you know, find uh, impressive 
moves in chess or whatever. They don't be like, I'm a horsey, yes. <laughs> you know, a <laughs> new game. So every, if you look at a good marriage or whatever, you can have a unique story that is unique to that marriage. But if you, but, but if you just look at it like, oh, it's all the same, you live, you die. Yeah, motherfucker, yeah, you live, you die. Good, yeah. Good, good job. Right, you know, right, right. No, it's, so, it's, it's certainly true that like the, you know, the secret is to live well and to fill your life with like meaningful moments and, you know, treat the marriage or the band or whatever you're in as an opportunity to do that. And if you live poorly, then you're just stuck in these vessels that like and, and are constantly surprised that they're all empty. Because you haven't filled them up, you know. It's yeah. like your band, your song, your solo, your marriage, your kid, whatever, whatever it is. You know, it's like it's like what you, what you give is what you get. That's that's yeah. always that's always uh, sort of a universal cliche, but a truth. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm back to the subject of constraints. I will say one constraint that's very different that I've learned this week. Holy hell, uh, is just the state of jazz clubs. In like around us, so uh, a little backstory. Like you know, obviously things with with our future booking are shaky. Like we're going on this, we're going on the road. We have like uh, a few weeks of shows, probably mostly without Danny, but uh, yeah. without you. Uh, but you know, mo- yeah, we'll we, we, we were trying to take some stuff out, but uh, uh, we, yeah. regardless, uh, we have that. But after that, there was a big question of like what I'm going to do with my time. So I was trying to find some gigs in Chicago, and Somehow, I, I I managed to get like a good weekly gig at Reggie's, and the guy's awesome. And we're somehow this guy loves us. We know him for like a thousand years. Right. Yeah. And and uh, no, but somehow because you know the the weekly gig there, the jam band Bellato. I know, but he would have figured something took, for you. Yeah. Anyway, you song. know. Well, initially he offered me to play out on the patio on Friday's afternoon which is not a good gig. And uh, I was just like, let's do something inside with a sound system at night, mm. try to make something happen, you know. So, uh, and and it's gonna be fun. We're gonna do like every Tuesday for like almost two months. But uh, I did go to Le Piano, which is like a jazz club in Rogers Park. And uh, I have to scrap it. So- But you used to, where you have to, you have to, you yeah, have to so, hang out there a lot and play? And I just, I you brought me a couple some, of them. And, and and, well, well, this is the thing. Like, the owner is, like, you know, a nice guy, kind of, like, jazz ju- drummer slash pianist. And he had this vision for this thing. Somehow survived COVID. It's like a piano bar, but now he has, like, bands you know built a patio so i thought you know what like maybe it'll be a good idea to play some solo guitar there maybe set up some duo shows just do something you know do do some music figure out some shit and i called him and um he's like yeah c- come over tonight we'll talk and he had like his first ever patio show there and he didn't really want to talk so i just you know it's like you know i have a baby like you know it's to leave the house is a production. Yeah. Anyway, left the house, went there to talk to him. He was kind of, you know, just busy. You know, not like he forgot he forgot he kind of forgot he called me. I I sat there and I listened to like a few songs. Jesus fucking Christ, man! It was like a quintet, trumpet player lady led the band, uh, and it was just how should I describe it in words? Horrendous. Mm-hmm. It was horrendous music. It was just. Like when, it's like you know when you listen to Wayne Shorter's like last couple of albums, <laughs> but like somehow, if somebody just listened to that and couldn't figure out how to even make something that like that, like mm. that's like it's like somebody taking like your three year old's drawings and trying to come up with like being like just it's like this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life and then just making like a ten, like just a misinterpretation of that that's so hideous like the lines don't even come together just literally the worst imaginable jazz pointless modern for the sake of being modern with nothing impressive going on just a blob 
a messy blob of nothingness. You know, that's just, its only point is for these people in their schools to not be perceived as like cliche or like hokey or like just normal jazz players. And they're not because none of them can play any jazz, it seems like, you know, it's, it's just it's just nothing, just people making nonsense. So I'm trying to say that I, I liked it. It was a good show. Um, and, uh, you know, I stick I stuck around for a little bit and really like, you know, it was I, I left I left there honestly feeling like I have food poisoning. Mm-hmm. And, and I came I, next day. I was teaching a lot. So it's not my studios like, you know, a few blocks away from uh, where this venue is. So I just stopped there after I taught a few lessons to talk to Chad, uh, the owner of this place. And this guy we played me. We, we knew him in the context of people who came to his place, not looking for anything, with our instruments, and would just blow his mind with our playing. Yeah, and he would give us drinks. And he would give us drinks, and he would love us. And he would just like be like, play this, and, you know, just, you know, he would close the place, and we'd play for him. He knows yeah. how we play. He loves the way we play. Yeah. And, but all of a sudden, I came there, and I saw a switch in his eyes where... All of this, were, it's like in that instant, he realized that like, oh, that relationship is over. And now this guy is asking me for something. Yeah, it was like this guy from Marbin that's uh, way too big for this place. Right. You know, and not I was like, oh, it's... Not to like another, for another one of my musicians. Yeah, you not know? to and, dub, dub him down a thousand notches. Dude, but it, it, it he was, was, in the, dude, in, was literally, he was literally sitting in a lawn chair on 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 uh on the street because he was on his patio and the lawn chair was like facing the curb right he sat down he's like let's talk and then he literally like signaled with his hand to the ledge and like come into my office and like the idea was that he's sitting in the lawn chair and i'm supposed to like sit on the fucking ledge of the street like uh, uh, on his knee that would be <laughs> I almost said that on his I was just like, no, thank you, I'll stand, man. Uh, it, it, it was just, uh, you know, this, uh, I'm not doing that. You know, it, it's you know, just, you know when it happened? It happened with uh, Hot Dog Place. Yes. But the guy wrote us like, because we looked for gig, Gypsy Jazz gigs, and the guy was like, I'm a huge a fan, huge. it's like I have this place. And then very quickly afterward, it, he, he started talking to us like shit, and I was like, oh, goodbye. Yeah. And, and I'm sure I mean I'm sure he's not a fan anymore too. Like in his mind, we were we were not okay. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very strange. When you take a look, I can I can't take a non sobered look at what a jazz club is now, you know, because I, I look, have something I have something before you go into it. Yeah, so yeah. sorry to cut you off, but um, you know they have this thing of if you build it, uh, they will come. But mm-hmm. the, what what comes is not the audience. It's jazz musicians looking for fifty dollar gigs and to, to to run you to the ground one shitty show at a time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, in my mind, I I, I naively thought that like you know, he has some people there drinking wine. We can make a nice thing happen. But I did. I forgot about this never ending stream of bullshit from the jazz schools and people begging for gigs again how he knows me he knows how we play he likes us and it doesn't matter like the moment you're positioned with this sea of people that will play for free or next to free and play music that for the wine gosling like tasteless patrons of these venues who are just like, you know, slightly better dressed alcoholics. Like, there's no difference between the people that go to that place and the place and you? right by it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, okay, yes, 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 you are. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, the same people. In my, it's not high class people. It's like, you know, they, like you're drinking the fucking box wine at a very, it's, it's, uh, it's the same people. Like, the people that are, they're literally bar hopping from the sports bar next door to your patio and Dude, you the, want them you're trying to draw them in i see that's them. that's part of american culture though if you remember what was one thing that's very different it's like our parents 
go to the theater. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, oh, show, shows or classical music or whatever. There is this thing of people that came from uh, Europe or the Western tip of Asia, mm-hmm. like we did. And uh, I told you about this crazy chick I met, right? The one that uh, talked yeah, to you, me about you finished the God. Po- yeah, finish the point first. And then, then, okay, uh, sorry, because she told me I'm from Southeast Asia. And I was like, I'm from the Western tip of Asia. I <laughs> was <laughs> trying to figure out where it is. Yeah. Anyway, um, so there is a thing about, and it's also a lot of pretense, a lot of stuff, that there is no real elit- elitism in the states. It's right. like there is, there are all those people that, you know, the political class, they think they're better than you. And, you know, obviously, like Dr. Fauci thing is the king of the world. It right? doesn't matter if you like him or not. He definitely fucking thinks that. But they don't. Like, but Dr. Fauci goes to see baseball. Do, 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 right. you know what I'm saying? Dr. Yeah. Fauci is not going to the fucking opera. So sure. it's, it's um, they don't have a thing. Of cultural. That the doctors of Chicago goes, go, would go to see great jazz at a wine, at a wine bar in Rogers Park. That's right. what I'm saying. And, yeah. and people in Israel, for example, that type of people, the doctors in Israel or the whatever, the they professors, will do the, they would do that. Yeah, and here you don't have that. Well, I mean, here you have that too. But there's a strange kind of pretense with the jazz club that somehow, like, and like in one hand, he's waving people off the street so he can make money. And on the other hand, he's pretending like that when they cross this threshold, they become like, you know, people of fine taste. Yeah. You know, and that, that's, the, that's kind of the crazy game. But, yeah, but, but they don't. They don't have people. Dude, it's not true. Because, yeah, yes, you have people that go to the CSO, all those 80 olds, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not saying it was never like that here. But it definitely wasn't like that as soon as, you know, as we've been living there for a while. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm not saying it's all bad. I just But that's just the way it is. It's like, dude, I know doctors. My ex-wife's family, it's filled with doctors. True. They, they don't... Mm-hmm. A lot of dumbasses or non-cultured people, yeah. Yeah, they're not cultured. It's right. just, they don't listen to nice music. They don't watch nice stuff. They don't read nice books. They don't, right. it's, it's not, it's not the type of person. Right. And it's like, okay, so yeah, I'm not saying that it's so great that you need to bring it from Europe or whatever. I'm just saying that it's not the case. So for a venue owner to build on something that just doesn't exist, it's a little bit strange. It is, but I'm saying, like, I think the venue owners are very complicit in this because, because they are, they have this endless supply of the worst version of the thing they're selling for almost free. And also people that they can treat terribly. And, will, you know what I mean? It's like people that will, uh, yeah. that will just bend to their will. And and the deck, that's the overwhelming thing that you forget that like there are now people that will play gigs for any amount, like if it's ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, like whatever he says it pays, tips, he will find a six piece band that yeah. will show up and play their original horrible jazz. Well, I I tell you what the thing that bothers me about everything about that is that does, it doesn't matter how good, and that's what something we figured out, and that's why we also left and did all the stuff we did, is that it doesn't matter how good you are, they're not going to let you into the green mill. Right. It's like, I can't play a solo and prove to the, that I need to get the green mill because I'm better. It's right. like, this, there is no world when somebody is looking better. And it used to be, they look at who's more famous. And we don't even care about that. Like I said, Chicago well, I mean, Jazz there, there are things you can do, but it's just I'm not gonna be the guy that does them. You yeah, I mean, like what you need to do it. What you need to do, you need to go hang out. You just need to go hang out, and you need to talk. You need to go hang out for six months, and you need to see the faces that keep I was about happening to say, in the loop. You know, and you need to start being friends, but like small talk friends. With all these people, like in, in a way that like just m- neither of us ever had those abilities for like a so second. So I will not. Okay, 
okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something, and I'm gonna I'm gonna specifically not bring it to my my experience. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna bring it to my experience today, not to my experience yesterday. So we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about you're my doing, experience. You're doing a lot of prefacing. <laughs> yeah, the just for you, so you won't bring it up. That's okay. why. Okay. So you know, I I went on this day today, right? So it's like if you hang out enough, you will get some. Do you know what I mean? Of course. But. I'm not the type of person that would hang out enough to get some. Yeah. And it's the same. And also, if you if they feel like you hang enough, you hang out to get some, then you're also not going to get some. Yeah. So it's like the hangout that you need to do at the Green Mill. It's like you need to be there all the time and hang out for like sometimes and be like, I would be here for years if I need to. Like right. I'm not even stressed out about when I'm going to get anything. Sure. And that's the only way that you can get it. It's like, we be we would go to a place to hang out, quote unquote, and be like, "We've been here for an hour." Yeah, absolutely. We'd be like, we get it. Just we handing out some? business cards. We'd like start like a. <laughs> yeah, we're like, really good. When when are we getting some? Hey, can I play some gypsy chess for you? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's like if I want the day today. It's like, hey, it's been we've been talking for an hour. Look at my dick. <laughs> when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> that's exactly right. You know that's, what I mean? It's like that's not how you get it. It's, no, it is not. I mean, it's how you get something, you know, like what, what, what <laughs> would happen <laughs> what did I, if, along the lines of that metaphor, basically what happened was, uh, you know, we went to a, we went to a girl on a date and we pulled our dick out and then she got scared and ran away. But then we just started running after everybody in the room with our dick out until we got some. <laughs> Like, I like fusion. What are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't hang out. We just went to play, you know? Yeah, but no, that's what we did. We pulled our instruments out and we're like, we're really good. Check us out. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, but, but, but then for real, it's like, it's not, I'm not playing this game. I could never play this game. I would never play this game. It's like, I don't, this, this, uh, Manip- with obvious manipulation that you're doing, that everybody it's, knows you're doing. But man, it's it's a whole language. Yeah, I mean, I actually think the real way to do it. There was a great song in Hebrew. I mean, it's it's a terrible song, but it's it's a great example. Uh, there's like an Alec Einstein song where it's all soccer player names. Yeah. I don't, you know, it's like the whole lyrics of like this long song is just soccer, soccer player names from all over the world and whatever the eighties. It's uh, like we didn't stop the fire kind of probably. Yeah. And, and, uh, I think like, I just want to show up at a jazz club and just be like, you know, Bud Powell, Charlie Parker, Charlie Parker, Bud Powell, John Coltrane, Wayne Shorter, and just like start name. Like if I could do that with like local jazz musicians, and then like slightly like Jimmy Haslip, Virgil Donadian, Holdsworth, uh, maybe like say like I played with, and then just like just talk in other musician names. Like to me, when I hear people talk, again, it always blew my mind with the name dropping game, like how if you listen to the story and you take out all the names a lot of the stories is like one mm-hmm. time i was in a room with <laughs> or i I, w- I walked to a rehearsal room and then i played a show and then i went home and that's like the story and and the rest of it is just names and this guy knew that guy i was in a studio once it's like it's like literally like listening to toddlers like it's, talk it, about their day no that's more interesting yeah uh, but yeah it's, so I don't un- yeah i don't understand the yeah i don't understand that game I mean, and we yeah. saw it in close to the edge too we just we don't we don't understand that game yeah. we don't understand uh, the dance like i think a lot of times they're trying like like so so you're trying to tell me you were in europe it's like that. What is the story? <laughs> it's like you were in Europe in a hotel. You're in a lobby of a hotel. Like you know, just minus all the names. What are you saying? And why are you saying this to me? What am I supposed to do? Like I was in an elevator with. I, I didn't take the names, but they were people. <laughs> it's like, are we impressing each other? Like when, 
when the people that do that to you hear you do it, hear you do it with the people you were in rooms with, let's say they were famous, are they impressed? How is this played? Like, I, I feel like I've always failed the interaction so consistently that I don't know, like, where it leads to. Are we supposed to start fucking? <laughs> like, you, know, you know, it reminds me. Like uh, again, I'm, 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 putting, I'm putting stuff on my recent experience on those dating apps, right? Okay. That some women that you start, I, I start talking to them, and I was like, lady, do, do you even know English? It's like, it, say, it says you were born and raised here. Do you know how to speak English? It's like, do you want us to just stare at our phones? You know what I mean? It's like you have to say sentence. You have to write sentences for me to be it for for it to be a conversation. Yeah. It's, it, if if you're not doing it, it's it's not gonna go. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm I'm out. I'm out of this. <laughs> like you write me three. I ask you three questions and you answer with 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 uh, seven words total. I'm out. Yeah. It's like, what are those people doing? What happened well, if you know, met your male counterpart? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, the only thing I can imagine is somebody like Ben would be like, oh my God, you're so hot. Thank you. No, it's like, oh wow. It's like, I think I'm in love with you. Thanks. Haha. No, it's like, oh my God. It's like, I can never get enough of you. Wow. You're amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I, the, these, uh, the, the truth is that they're just the volumes that they're contending with. Like if you actually took, took the amount of guys they talk to in a day and put all those words together, they would be like a novelist. <laughs> they're, just, they're just working like they can't possibly like, you know, but that's think also, to the level of the peons. But that's also stupid. Do you know what I mean? That also means that they're stupid. Well, I mean, the stupidest thing is probably to spend your time on Tinder. Uh, yes and no. As you, <laughs> as you know, as you know, it's it's, it's depends on, incorrect. Depends on the goal. Depends <laughs> yeah. On the goal, I suppose. Yeah. But, but but notice notice that we're trying to talk about music and your wavelength is tender, so it it poisons the soul and it gets you in a very deep place. If that it, yeah, you know well, you're hanging I'm, out you're hanging out there. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. I know. I'm just saying. It's like you. Well, I'm in the I'm in the pits. I need to get out of the pits. You have to, to go out of the pits of, uh, of I'm, shame I'm and darkness. Here, I'm here to help you by extending yeah. a lifeline upwards from from the realms of a Tinder chat room and back but, into the realm. I of know. I that's how I bring music. it. I bring it back to the music. <laughs> the problem with music is that we don't know how to behave with those people. That no. they say something and we say something back, thinking. Like we tell our stories and we say something back or we ask them a question about what we're doing. So and it's like, just it's just, we are this. not connecting. Do you know what I mean? We yes, are we not are. connecting. It's just, it's not happening. I just don't know. And when we can... give up, that's what happened on the cruise and we're talking to these people. Yeah. It's like, yeah. we're like, yeah. You know, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, like the Israeli guy or the other guys that we met and we tried to have conversation with them. Yeah, and I was like, the young guys was amazing because like they 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 looked us up on Instagram and they were not interested in us because our oh them yeah they got erased and then they looked on Facebook and then they're like wow like a hundred of my friends like your page oh my god how many numbers and then they were like interested in us for a second and they were like starting to talk to us and then I don't know we must have said the same the wrong thing told them a story that was too crazy and you know they just kind of turned around and walked away but what I'm saying is I don't know what happens. I need to, what I'm saying really is we need to watch uh, jazz musician talk porn. We need to look at how <laughs> they do it to each other. We just need to see them interact. Like that, yeah, that's... I just don't get what's going on when I'm not there. Well. I don't people know. People generally, but specifically with jazz really? musicians. Do they have podcasts? Like, can we listen to two of them talking to each other? Does that I exist? tried to listen to a jazz podcast and I almost, I almost went into a coma and died. <laughs> so I don't, I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, though. But I mean, it's like, you know, I always, oh, there, there's the people that like really talk jazz, too. Like, I can't take it. If, if they're black, it's better. But like, if, like if, if it's like just a normal guy, especially like an Israeli guy, and I hear him say cat or jive, I mean, I can't not laugh. It's funny. Okay, listen, when you listen to a jazz podcast, it's, it's like you're seeing two, 
two almost extinct monkeys <laughs> trying to mate. It's like you don't... <laughs> it's like we're making all these moves and some of the moves make sense to each other. But I'm looking from the outside and I was like, what are we doing? Right. I yeah. don't get any of it. It's what, so foreign. Are they mating now? Like, was I just want to know at, at what point of this interaction do you get a gig? Right? Like, I, I don't want to go any deeper. I don't want to, like, become best friends with somebody. You know what I mean? I just, like, when did they get the gig? I don't know. I, I played with happen? a couple of people here. And I got one guy on the gig, and I was like, I was, I'm very good at saxophone. We obviously acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. Many times, it's like, why am I not getting all the gigs now? Yeah. For being good at saxophone. Because they had a bad, because they had an awkward time hanging out. But That's they what didn't. Happens to people. But they but. don't even have an awkward time hanging out with me. Well, the guy John Giggs did because he didn't like my jokes. No, no, the, you, you're, just, you're just oblivious to it. They're not, you're like, maybe they're not having a bad time with you or maybe they're like, they're like you know, doing this, but they're not having the time they would have with each other minus you. They're having chaotic time with me. Yes, exactly. It's exactly that. Like, I know that too. Like, in, like, in Christie's gig, I remember like the few times I got called to play with a jazz singer. Like, I'm always like telling stories from the road stuff and they're like kind of awkwardly laughing and, you know, do this, this, try to actually like really talk. Like, I feel like that's, that's how I connect. Like, let's like, so tell me your shit. Like, tell me, tell me yeah. something that happened in your life. Like, you know, and uh, I feel like to them, like when it's over, it's almost like, you know, people like just climbing out of like a shelter after a tornado, like they're just trying to put it back together. Yeah. Like that's yeah. not how gigs are. Like gigs, gigs are like, we do the set, then we take a set break. We each go get a drink. We talk about like the fucking weather and never bring up like, I don't know, politics, religion or what some, the other thing. And like, then we do a second set and then we're like, you know, like make some jokes and then it's over, you know? And, and like, I feel like this whole thing that like, we're, we're just fucking talking <laughs> shit. Like, well, it's like, you know, we were in the wedding that John took me to. And it's like, we, we, eat and we take it, we eat it all this vegan food. <laughs> And it's like, oh, I can't believe it's vegan. I'm like, yeah, me too. I can't believe it's vegan. Are you sure it's vegan? <laughs> it tastes like ass. <laughs> you said that? Yeah, but it's like, you can't tell jokes to anybody. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> Did it taste like ass? Was it a joke? <laughs> Well, it didn't taste like ass. It just tastes like, tastes like shit, you know. <laughs> but I, it's like you, you wanna have a good time. It's not even the I point. Do, I do too. I do too. That's in the cruise. Like, I mean, honestly, I was drunk and stoned the whole time. Yeah. And there was like, um, there was like, uh, kind of like a fifteen Mississippi before I would say something insane. <laughs> like an <every> interaction. <laughs> Like, I can't even tell you how many people, like, would be like, you know, oh, it's like, I'm in this, this. And I'm like, oh, I'm in Marvin. So this guy drank his piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what Kava is? Yeah, and just lead into, like, a fucking psychotic story. Yeah, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. I, it's I should... the same thing, like, in our show. It's like, when we're there, we're like, oh, my God, I'm having the best time. But when we're, after we're out, we're like, Oof, I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear fusion again. <laughs> yeah. For like 10 years. Like my brain is melted. This was the most intense thing I ever heard. Okay. Yeah. I need, I need, I need a break. Yeah. I mean, back, back to the, I guess, I guess uh, the Tinder metaphor. I mean, I think it's, you know, like a lot of people going out to a concert. It's, uh, you're just kind of looking to start romance for most people. And sometimes you just go in a room and you just, you know, get the shit fucked out of you and all your holes. Have to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, told, uh, I told you, I'm almost done with it. I have a couple more days. And, yeah, and, so I feel like, done. like we've, we've done that to plenty of our audience members. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I've, I've, mentioned this, I've mentioned this on the podcast a few times, 
but I will say that one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things that can happen in a fusion show is the excited girl during the first 30 seconds of the music of the show. Like, that's like going up front like rocking out like this is amazing yeah like messing up amazing this is like the best energy ever like listen oh guitar solo saxophone and, yeah like what the but, fuck yeah and then like guitar solo starts in 10 seconds and then she's like oh my god oh my god he's gonna keep <laughs> going oh no where am i <laughs> it just goes to, like this is the best thing ever to like like I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, I have to run. <laughs> I made a huge mistake. Because <laughs> like you're just your best cheerleader <laughs> that that the world can evoke to the most like, shameful walk away. <laughs> just, I can see when it's when it's starting to happen. It's like, dude. Oh like, yeah. We've like you, you are not so going. Times. You are not gonna be able to sustain that energy, girl. <laughs> like <laughs> you are giving. Like I can count to ten. But, We've seen it so many times. We have no clue. <laughs> it's a, you know something about fusion in general. Because I was think I was listening to like uh, something on uh, what's his name, the drummer from Genesis, uh, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. It's like a Phil Collins song, and it's just like kind of a slow groove. And I was like, nobody's playing thirty second notes. Like how dare they? How dare they? But like ever. And maybe a few of them could. You know Who what I knows? mean? Yeah. But it's like they, they're choosing not to fill well, probably in. Probably can't. Well, yeah, probably but, can't, but, but somebody yeah. can, you know. Like they could have paid a guy who can. Yeah. Aid. You know, it's just listening to it. It's, like, it's not a 30 second on this whole album. It's just like, interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Strange choice. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, because like if there was a beat on my album that went like, <laughs> yeah, everything would be like, <laughs> just like some divided, like fuck, like like rainbow well, is shooting. That will be the main thing, and then you're gonna double that up. <laughs> That's correct, and and slice it up and do all these things to rhythm. Yeah, but man, some people play a very uh, a very different sport than we do. Very different yeah. sport, with like similar materials. Yeah. Anyway, on that happy note, we should probably call it. All right. All right. So, see you guys next time. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Danny. All right. Good. Bye. Bye.